about SSIDs and all that sort of rubbish. If you have to worry about any of that, just tick that box called meshing, give them each a separate IP address, and that is it. There really is very little else to do. Uh, now, so just while I've been waffling away here, I've been thinking of some questions that people often ask, and uh, one of the uh, one of the big questions or frequent questions is roaming. What a lot of people uh, would like, and I say would like, these don't do it, but I'll, t I'll tell you what I mean, is roaming. Now what that means is, let's say you had your Wi-Fi client, your person stood here with his notebook in his hands, and he is connected to this node here. Um, now, in a roaming network, what would happen if this person actually walked the distance from here to here, as Obviously, as it goes along here, it reaches a certain point where the Wi-Fi connection from here is stronger than here. And with roaming, what would happen is the notebook would magically change its Wi-Fi connection from pointing to this node to this node. Um, so obviously, the, that means that the notebook is uh, all the time connected to the node with the strongest connection. And um, uh, roaming also means that the changeover point, or the point at uh, which it changed from that network to network, is essentially undetectable as far as the notebook user is concerned. Notebook users perhaps wouldn't actually care about a small transient break in their connection, but um, if we're thinking about people with Wi-Fi cordless phones or something like that, then um, having a continuity of connectivity when going from here to here is some advantageous. Now the bad news. No, these do not do roaming. Um, roaming is very hard. Roaming does not just mean giving them all the sem same SSID and the same channel. That's not roaming. Windows is quite stupid. And if you set both of these on the same SSID, Windows will carry on trying to talk to this one all the way as you're walking down here. It'll still talk to that one, and it'll carry on talking to that one, even if you're stood right next to this one. As long as the Windows PC can see this, it'll still stay connected to it. It won't actually jump from there to there until the link back to here completely breaks down. That's Windows networking for you. Um, it won't automatically Wi-Fi hop from node to node. The other thing that Windows uh, won't do is sort out your ARP table. Now, a bit more complicated than that, but all the time your client was connected to here, and let's say this say this say this this say this, say, well, this one was the gateway. This one's got the access to the internet. Okay. Now, all the time your client was talking to this one, then its traffic to the internet was obviously presumably going down this short path here, out this one to the internet. If the notebook magically moves over to here and connects to here, then all of these devices, or more specifically the router that's connected to here still carries on trying to send the traffic down this route here to the notebook. Now that's not the fault of the mesh, it is the fault of the router that is connected to the mesh, the thing that's tacked onto the gateway here. It still carries on trying to send the traffic by this route. Now obviously the com computer's not there anymore, the computer's here. Now what that means is if this was on the, on the internet, there will be a delay of typically 30 to 40 seconds when no traffic would flow to this notebook because it's still going the other way and it will carry on going the other way until the router here which is sending the traffic realizes something's gone wrong i.e. it's not getting any replies when it realizes it's not getting any replies it sends out what's called an ARP broadcast which goes around the mesh to relocate this wireless client when it's relocated the wireless client traffic then continues to flow again. So there was a break between the traffic when it went there and the traffic going this route. And I say that break is typically anything from 30, 40, 45 seconds, that sort of order of magnitude. Um, yet again, no good if you're trying to do uh, any roaming where you're trying to have a continuous traffic feed. Um, now, as I say, these units don't do um, uh, the handshaking necessary to support roaming. If you want roaming, it's different products, and I'll be perfectly frank, I don't actually know of a meshing product which actually supports roaming. Um, but that's one of the common things people ask. 
99 times out of 100, it's something that people ask for, but when they actually think about it, they think, well, do I really want to be tapping away on a notebook while walking from here to here? Most people don't, so meshing is, uh, roaming is, is, is in real life not really worth anything worth worrying about. But um, that aside, very, very quick and a simple system, just to bang up a few nodes, stick them up in the outdoors. Um, if it's the M2000 unit, for example, just bang them on some poles. You probably want to change change the antennas. Uh, probably go for some omni antennas on them so that the nodes can actually see each other outside. Uh, and you can very quickly cover a caravan park of sort of you know two or three acres very very quickly with just a handful of these. Um, on the indoor product, yet again, you can use the M36, which is a smoke alarm product. Just bang one in each room. They'll automatically link to each other. They'll mesh back to each other. Uh, which means you've got um, Wi-Fi coverage throughout the establishment and as I say, dead quick and easy to set up. Um, very, very quickly you can have the, unit, uh, the units up and working. Uh, that's it. Any questions, send them to us at Soulwise and we'll try and help you out. Thanks a lot.